Hello students, welcome to Department of Mathematics, myself Mahesh M, lecturer in Mathematics, Dr. R.B. Patil Mahesh P.U. College, Hubali. Dear students, in this session, let us start a new chapter called Integrals. It comes under Integral Calculus. As you know, there are two types of calculus. One is Differential Calculus, the another one is Integral Calculus. Already we have been studying continuity and differentiability and applications of derivatives. So those concepts comes under differential calculus. And in case of integral calculus, we are going to study integrals. One of the very important chapter for your examination point as well as for your higher education in mathematics. So I request you all that you need to study this chapter not only for the sake of examination, even you should study this for your understanding purpose and your higher education in mathematics. So let us start with the chapter integrals. This is lecture number one concept or chapter name is integrals. Dear students, why we need to study this chapter means why integration is necessary. The answer for this is Consider a function y equal to f of x and the area under the curve f of x you can see here that a is equal to question mark. When you have a question what is the area under the curve y equal to f of x. How to find the area under this curve y equal to f of x. So in such cases I am going to find the area under this curve y equal to f of x. So the question is what is the area under y equal to f of x. To get the area divide the reason into small slice. Dear students divide the area into small slice each of width delta x that you can see here. See that a area I am dividing into small pieces called rectangles you can observe there are rectangles each rectangle having the width delta x I am denoting the width as delta x. So we could calculate the function at a few points and you can add up the slices of width delta x to find the area I am making small slices each of width delta x. So after that students you can add them so that slowly we are going to get the required area under the curve y equal to f of x. Answer is not accurate because you can see there, there are some left out area. The complete area we won't get if you add these slices. Some area we get left out. To have that also, the left out area also if you want, make small slices make the delta x I mean the width even smaller and smaller that you can see. We can make delta x a lot smaller and add up many small slices. See in the previous delta x was bigger here delta x is smaller. It means some more slices I am doing here. Some more slices I am making in that area. Some more rectangles I am drawing in this area making the delta x very small. So answer is getting better now. Answer means we are getting the area under the curve slowly if you are making the delta x very small and rectangles we will get very small and then you are going to add up all the rectangles or slices. So we can make delta x a lot smaller very small and add up many small slices so that you can get the answer better here. So initially the area we were finding we made some slices with delta x as a width. After that we are making delta x very small so that area is getting better and better now. So it means students area under the curve is approximately equal to sum of area of rectangles. You can observe the diagram here area under the curve y equal to f of x is approximately the summation of all the rectangles students. Yes, definitely. So it is denoted the summation. So SN we denote it. 
when delta x is infinitely zero very near to zero making very very small i am making delta x very 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 small to find the area under y equal to f of x so this we call it as delta x is tending to zero that only the meaning when you are making delta x very small you are making the distance of that width you are making it very very less means of course delta x is near to zero only so this we say limit as delta x tends to zero sn sn means the summation of all the rectangles that yes we call it as integration this symbol is nothing but elongated yes yes means sum dear students sum the first letter we are taking so this symbol is nothing but summation elongated yes of what the rectangles with the width f of x into dx here f of x is nothing but the height of the rectangle this dx is nothing but width of the rectangle so if you add up all those rectangles this is nothing but adding all the infinitely small rectangles to find the area so that we get the answer very very better so what you mean by integration integration is nothing but a way of adding slices to find the whole to find the whole area we added the small slices so integration can be used to find areas volumes central points and many useful things so one point you remember students integration is nothing but summation adding adding infinitely small quantities so that i can see now integrals that is the introduction part of integrals why we study integration there are two types of integrals one is indefinite integral and another one is definite integral let us start indefinite integral then we go for definite integrals later so now indefinite integrals this is completely different students indefinite integral we study from differentiation concept it is actually the reverse process of differentiation how it is going to be reverse process i will recall the d by dx of sin x that is cos x one more d by dx of sin x plus 2 is cos x because you know the differentiation then d by dx of sin x minus 7 is again cos x because differentiation of sin x is cos x minus 7 is a constant its derivative is 0 so now i want to take this d by dx to the right side look at the screen this d by dx in all the cases i will take it to the right side so let us see what happens if you take d by dx to the right side it will be integration of cos x dx is equal to sin x similarly second one if i take d by dx right side integration of cos x dx is equal to sin x plus 2 similarly if you take d by dx right side integration of cos x dx is equal to sin x minus 7 dear students when i take this d by dx this is nothing but derivative if you take this to the right hand side then this will be anti derivative there it is derivative when it comes to the right side it will be anti derivative how to read it anti derivative of cos x with respect to x is sin x how you got it this is sin x this is from here so if you not understand there look at the second one d by dx if i take to the right side this will be integration or anti derivative or primitive any one word we use usually we call it as integration so integration of cos x with respect to x is look at this sin x plus 2 one more d by dx if i send it to the right side that will be integration of the right side with respect to x is equal to sin x minus 7 if i take one more d by dx of sin x plus 9 is definitely cos x this implies when you take d by dx to the right side that will be integration of write it integration this is elongated s that i told you integration of cos x with respect to x dx must be 
इज इक्वल टू साइन एक्स प्लस नाइन साइन एक्स प्लस नाइन डियर स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट टेकिंग डी बाई डी एक्स टू द राइट साइड एंड राइटिंग इट एज इंटीग्रेशन यू कैन ऑब्जर्व फॉर ऑल इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ कॉस एक्स इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ कॉस एक्स इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ कॉस एक्स द आंसर आर डिफरेंट साइन एक्स साइन एक्स प्लस टू साइन एक्स माइनस सेवन वन मोर साइन एक्स प्लस नाइन लाइक दिस यू आर गोइंग टू गेट स्टूडेंट्स दैट्स वाई वी कॉल इट एज इनडेफिनेट मीन्स देर आर मेनी एंटी डेरिवेटिव फॉर कॉस एक्स रिमेंबर देर आर मेनी एंटी डेरिवेटिव फॉर कॉस एक्स सो इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग ऑल दीज कॉन्स्टेंट्स वी राइट जनरली एज प्लस सी we write plus c it is a constant of integration instead of writing plus 2 minus 7 plus 9 we write this constant of integral in general we can have d by dx of f of x plus c is equal to g of x any function here differentiation of f of x plus c is g of x i am taking if you take d by dx to the right hand side you are going to get integration of g of x dx is equal to this f of x plus c so this is called as indefinite integral so finally we can define indefinite integral is the process inverse process of it is the inverse process of differentiation inverse process of differentiation is called as integration this you have to remember students is called as integration you can observe from differentiation we are getting integration that's why we always call inverse process of differentiation is integration students i just want to tell you one point here differentiation already you studied here you are studying integration okay now differentiation is something like saying the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 from 1 to 5 is nothing but differentiation now calling the numbers from 5 4 3 2 1 this is differentiation and this is integration you can observe integration is exactly reverse of differentiation so a student will study this integration when they know differentiation properly because when you know the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 then only we will say the numbers 5 4 3 2 1 unless you don't unless you know the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 you can't say the numbers in a reverse order that's why i'm telling you to study this integration one must make sure that they must know differentiation because it is exactly reverse process of differentiation so before going to the next concept let me take one more example d by dx of e raised to 3x in differentiation you learned e raised to 3x into 3 now anti derivative of e raised to 3x if i want then 3 you should take to the left side so d by dx of 1 by 3 e to the power 3x is equal to e to the power 3x dear students now if i want the integration or anti derivative of look at that integration of e raised to 3x with respect to x is equal to look at this one 1 by 3 e to the power 3x don't forget here plus c so plus c denotes the constant of integration every student must write this plus c in indefinite integral so this is what the integration in that indefinite integral dear students so after understanding this much let us move into uh, as a reverse process of differentiation how we get the integration or anti derivative find the anti derivative of the following by inspection method we say dear students you are not finding the derivatives you are finding the anti derivatives remember that question number 1 sin 2x dear students before only i tell you this sin 2x is a derivative of a function for which function it has become the derivative that you have to calculate 
solution i recall d by dx of cos 2x that is minus sin 2x into 2 dear students i am recalling differentiation of cos 2x because if i differentiate cos 2x then i get a minus sin 2x into 2 so now i want only sin 2x only sin 2x i want i don't want minus and 2 so i will send this minus to the left side even this 2 also to the left side so that d by dx of minus 1 by 2 cos 2x is equal to only sin 2x are you understanding d by dx of minus 1 by 2 cos 2x is equal to sin 2x now derivative of minus 1 by 2 cos 2x is sin 2x and the antiderivative of sin 2x is minus 1 by 2 cos 2x that comes from here so i repeat students you can observe the screen once again derivative of minus 1 by 2 cos 2x is sin 2x and the antiderivative of sin 2x is minus 1 by 2 cos 2x so that's why we call it as the reverse process of differentiation so what is the antiderivative of sin 2x minus 1 by 2 cos 2x so like this we recall the differentiation to find the antiderivatives so let us see like this the questions question number 2 cos 2x dear students try to understand you are finding the antiderivative of cos 2x you must recall the derivative yes now i recall d by dx of sin 2x you can ask me a question sir why you are considering d by dx of sin 2x you can see the screen if you differentiate sin 2x then you will get cos 2x into 2 here if i recall d by dx of tan 2x are you going to get cos 2x no so we get cos 2x only when if you differentiate sin 2x that's why i am recalling d by dx of sin 2x is cos 2x into 2 so my job i want only cos 2x so taking 2 to the left side so that that 2 will come to the left side d by dx of 1 by 2 sin 2x is only cos 2x dear students at this point try to understand the derivative of 1 by 2 sin 2x is equal to cos 2x now antiderivative see the word the antiderivative of cos 2x is 1 by 2 sin 2x where you get from where you get it from here 1 by 2 sin 2x one more example i take here so that you can understand better find the antiderivative of cos 3x okay i should recall d by dx of which function i should recall to have the antiderivative of cos i should recall sin 3x why i recall the d by dx of sin 3x because sin 3x differentiation is cos 3x into 3 to have this cos 3x i am recalling sin 3x derivative so after recalling and getting the derivative taking 3 to the left side why sir you can ask me i want only cos 3x that's why taking 3 to the left side so d by dx of 1 by 3 sin 3x is equal to only in the right hand side cos 3x dear students you will read this as derivative of 1 by 3 sin 3x is equal to cos 3x now in this way if you want to read antiderivative of cos 3x is 1 by 3 sin 3x therefore antiderivative try to understand this is the beginning antiderivative of cos 3x is 1 by 3 sin 3x so hence we got the antiderivative of cos 3x so similar to this examples we have some more let us see one by one question number three e to the power 2x find the antiderivative of e to the power 2x so which function you want to recall you have to recall d by dx of e raised to 2x only 
so that uh, e raised to 2x differentiation is e raised to 2x into 2 taking 2 to the left side similar method d by dx of 1 by 2 e raised to 2x is equal to e raised to 2x so derivative of 1 by 2 e raised to 2x is e raised to 2x and anti derivative of e raised to 2x is that 1 by 2 e raised to 2x so like this we find the anti derivatives hope you understood if you not take e raised to 3x recall d by dx of e raised to 3x and take 3 to the left side and continue the procedure this is called anti derivative by inspection method try yourself some questions here e raised to 3x you try in the same manner e raised to minus 2x you try so after that let us go to the next question number 6 sorry number 4 x cube find the anti derivative of x cube dear students x cube is a differentiation of a function yav function ge differentiation agide so let us recall d by dx of x raised to 4 because you can see the differentiation of x raised to 4 is 4x cube. Hopefully you are seeing x cube. But only x cube you want. That 4 you must take to the left side. So d by dx of 1 upon 4 x raised to 4 is x cube. It means derivative of 1 by 4 x raised to 4 is x cube. Then antiderivative of x cube is that bracket 1 by 4 x raised to 4. So, this is what the anti derivative that comes from in this direction. Let me take one more example. Question number 5 x raised to 5. Think on your own anti derivative of x raised to 5 you want. Recalling is very important. Which function you want to recall? Very simple. A hint I tell you this has become the derivative of a function. For which function? when you differentiate a function you will see x raised to 5 so which function you have to recall here you have to recall d by dx of x raised to 6 am i right now students if you differentiate x raised to 6 you will get a 6 into x raised to 5 only x raised to 5 you want but 6 you should take to the left side so that 6 comes to the left side d by dx of 1 upon 6 x raised to 6 is equal to x raised to 5 so, anti derivative of x raised to 5, 1 by 6, x raised to 6. Hope you understood this question. So, this is the way that we have to recall. Question number 6. Very important students. What is the anti derivative of 1 by x? See, when I say what is the anti derivative of 1 by x, it means 1 by x has become the derivative of a function. So, for which function? this 1 by x has become the derivative that we have to recall that is called by inspection method. Suppose because x is not equal to 0 I should consider both x less than 0 x greater than 0. Let me take x greater than 0. Suppose x is greater than 0. Recall d by dx of log x. Sir why you are recalling log x? Why not sin x? Why not tan x? Hello my dear students. If I recall log x the derivative of log x then I get 1 by x. Sir, why you want 1 by x? Array students, I want 1 by x only. I am finding the anti derivative of 1 by x. Na? That's why. So, it is my recalling. Why, sir? How you recall? Very simple. I have studied differentiation. I remember that d by dx of log x. That's why I am recalling d by dx of log x is 1 by x. So, ultimately, you are going to ask me, sir, is it differentiation necessary? You only see the screen students, you only listen at my explanation. How much differentiation is useful here? This integration is completely based on differentiation. So, d by dx of log x is 1 by x. Let us continue. Suppose x is less than 0. Recall d by dx of minus. Suppose x is less. Okay students, let us continue the discussion. Suppose x is less than 0, I have to recall d by dx of log of minus x because x is less than 0, x value will be minus x. So, d by dx of log of minus x, if you apply chain rule, log differentiation 1 upon minus x, minus x differentiation is minus 1, minus and minus will get cancelled, again I get 1 by x. 
dear students you can observe this carefully you are getting d by dx you are getting d by dx of log x as 1 by x even d by dx of log of minus x is 1 by x only so if i send a d by dx to the right side d by dx to the right side then anti derivative of 1 by x is there are two answers anti derivative of anti derivative of 1 by x there are two answer one is log x the another one is log of minus x so which one you are going to write whether you will write log x or log of minus x combining these two i will write it as log of mod of x in this modulus x there is log x as well as log of minus x so what is the anti derivative of 1 by x here log of modulus of x remember the anti derivative of 1 by x is log of mod of x this is very important remember this remember this all i got it from the definition of modulus function modulus of x is x if x is greater than or equal to 0 minus x if x is less than 0 hope you understood from this modulus only we have taken plus x as well as minus x so what is the anti derivative of 1 by x finally log of mod of x further a to the power x what is the anti derivative of a to the power x again i go back to the differentiation i recall d by dx of a to the power x that is a to the power x into log a hope you remember the differentiation of a raised to x is a raised to x into log a taking log a to the left side so that d by dx of a raised to x upon log a is equal to a raised to x derivative of a raised to x upon log a is a raised to x the anti derivative of a raised to x is can you guess what is the anti derivative of a raised to x is it a raised to x upon log a 100 percent a raised to x upon log a like this we get the anti derivative of a raised to x let me go to the next example like this ax plus b the whole square to find the anti derivative recall d by dx of ax plus b to the power 3 you can ask me a question sir why ax plus b to the power 3 look at the differentiation of this one 3 into ax plus b the whole square into a this comes from chain rule differentiation using chain rule so here i want only ax plus b the whole square so taking 3 and a to the left side because i want only x plus b the whole square so the 3a will be in the denominator and only ax plus b the whole square in the left side so dear students try to read from left derivative of 1 by 3a ax plus b the power 3 is ax plus b the whole square now from right to left anti derivative of ax plus b the whole square is 1 upon 3a ax plus b to the power 3 this is the anti derivative of the question number 8 next question number 9 anti derivative of the two functions addition of two functions 3x square plus 4x cube dear students very simple one more time i want to tell you to find the anti derivative think 3x square has become the derivative for a function for which function this 3x square is the derivative and also 4x cube this has become the derivative for a function for which function this has become the derivative if you think like this then definitely will understand the solution here recall d by dx of x cube plus x raised to 4 sir why x cube plus x raised to 4 differentiate x cube is it 3x square differentiate x raised to 4 is it 4x cube definitely so d by dx of x cube plus x raised to 4 is 3x square plus 4x cube then anti derivative of 3x square plus 4x cube is definitely x cube plus x raised to 4 so what is the anti derivative of 3x square plus 4x cube that is x cube plus x raised to 4 is the answer exactly reverse of differentiation from left to right differentiation from right to left anti derivative or integration so let me have one more anti derivative of cot x again i tell you students this cot x has become the derivative for a function 
for which function is a, it has become the derivative let us recall recall d by dx of log of sin x you can ask me why sir log of sin x you are recalling do the differentiation what is the log sin x using chain rule 1 upon sin x into cos x so here i am going to get cos x by sin x as cot x wow we got cot x in the rhs so how to read derivative of log of sin x is cot x now in reverse order i have to read anti derivative of cot x is log of sin x so what is the anti derivative of cot x here log of sin x dear students this is nothing but recalling the differentiation to find the anti derivative so this is not a suitable method to all types of functions it is not possible to always recalling the differentiation to have the anti derivative or integration so in this lecture i have explained the introduction part of integration and how to find the anti derivatives of some functions in the next video i'll come with the standard integral formulas thank you students